welcome to LLMX, the Tech Mahindra podcast where we go behind the scenes at the world's leading media companies and talk to their leaders to understand how they are using Gen AI in their media operations. My name is Jay Chauhan and I lead the media and entertainment competency for Tech Mahindra globally. Today we're joined by George Burcher, a very special guest all the way from Austria. He is the managing director at Russ Media. George, a very warm welcome to you. Thank you, um, and uh, yeah, great to be here, and thank you for the invitation. Yes, and I, I, lest I forget to mention, you have just won two big awards at the INMA and at One Infra, so congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> big thank you from the whole team. Uh, great. Uh, George, just to kick things off, would be great if you could maybe introduce yourself to our audience before we kick in. Mm -hmm. um, yes, as you said, I'm managing director of Russ Media, uh, especially there for the operating part of sales, marketing, and the digital part. Um, and I'm fully fascinated of, of the possibilities of Gen AI, and, and uh, I'm really happy to share uh, our track since 2022 up to 2024, and why we get these two amazing awards for us. Excellent. Well, uh, let's just dive straight in. Uh, it'd be great if you could maybe introduce uh, Rust Media to our audiences and, and where you're from and what you're about. Yes, um, absolutely. Um, happy to share a few uh, insights of our company, only that you know who we are and where do we uh, where we come from. Um, at the end, uh, we we are a European media company. Some can call you can call it also a local media company founded 1919, um, and still a family company, a family owned company. Um, only that for everybody know this is Europe um, in the moment, and there you see that the, the, the small part in the middle. It's uh, directly on the border to Switzerland and Germany, and next to the Lake of Constance, there is a region called Vorarlberg. Um, and as you see, you can read it later also, it's uh, Fallberg is one of the strongest economic regions in whole Europe. We have uh, up to 20 hidden champions. So we have a lot of world leading companies are coming from Fallberg. Um, and uh, the nine of 10 from them are family owned till today. So we have a really strong industry there. Um, and it's not only important for, for Europe, it's, it's also important for the whole world. And we started there in 1919, but our digital footprint uh, with our whole portfolio is going over to the USA, uh, and up, but especially whole Europe. Um, where we come from, as I said, 1919 founded by Eugen Russ. Um, it's now is the fourth generation of the families in the company. Um, and uh, I think we are well known for a few innovations. So the Fallberger Nachrichten uh, from us was the, was the first, world first four color daily newspaper um, in the world. And everybody was talking about the Mickey Mouse newspaper and it will never work when we started it. Um, and we started 1995 with the first regional German speaking news portal. It's called VOL.at. Um, we were the third news portal in Europe, uh, in the German speaking market, um, behind the Spiegel, the Standard, and then we started with VOL.at. Uh, and uh, we we have now two structures in the company. The one is the media part, um, especially daily newspaper, news portals, magazines, this kind of stuff, um, very focused on the western part of Austria. And on the other side, the investment arm, um, as you mentioned, uh, we launched 2017. Um, we have all about 1,200 employees, 50% are working only pure digital um, or the whole portfolio. Um, we are in different European locations, but not with media, with, with other uh, market, especially marketplaces and other business models. Um, that's the rest media equity part. It's the second one where we are working, our, our footprint is in 150 markets worldwide at the moment, and we make more than 200 million revenue. Um, on the investment side and on the other side we have the media part and for that I will uh, take care and be responsible and we'll talk about what we did for AI and why I'm here and why you invited me as you mentioned that um, we won two global media worldwide awards for our concept uh, Rus Media meets AI. 
Excellent. Thanks so much. So two things uh, struck me from your introduction of Bruce Media. One is that you have a very you have a, a legacy that goes back to 1990. It's more than 100 years old. So I can only imagine the the rich media archives that you would have and, and how that can be, you know, I guess, uh, you know, uh, using AI, for example, today use uh, extract metadata from that to enrich storytelling of today. So that's I, that, that that's a great opportunity, I felt. And the second thing that struck me was that you seem like you guys are innovators because even though they were naysayer that's saying, oh, Mickey Mouse, you know, newspaper and stuff, but you pushed ahead and you went ahead with the four color uh, newspaper. So it's great to speak to an innovator. Thank you. The, the main innovator was our, our owner, um, Eugen Rus, Eugen Arus. Um, he's still in charge. Uh, it was also when Apple comes with desktop publishing or when we see it's possible for desktop publishing, uh, Eugen go straight to the airport, fly to California um, with, a, with a colleague, uh, put there a few pure new Macs, back, fly back to Austria, and then we, we implemented desktop publishing over Mac. Uh, and we were also there, the one of the first, or the first one who invented it there. So yes, uh, we had a few great ideas, um, and we still have a few great ideas. Yeah, because you you were mentioning uh, size and being being a small media company coming out of Austria, but great innovators can come from anywhere. So that's what I'd say. Thank you. Yeah, great. So now let's let's dive straight into the topic of discussion. Your award at Inma and uh, Wanifra. So if you could get straight into. Yes, of course. So. Um, that was the main question when we when we started with AI. AI it started on the day when ChatGPT was was launched in November 2022, um, and where we when we see or where we had the first view on on the chatbot, um, we see that that this may be or this surely will be the next iPhone moment for the whole industry, um, but in a different way. When we see that the iPhone was invented by Steve Jobs or Apple, we see that the the the, the opportunity to to get news as consumer were completely uh, in a different uh, started in a completely different way, and, and now it's for everybody. It's easy to get informations around the world. Now what we see is that the creation of this information is democratized, and everybody can create information. Um, of course, also in the year when the half, more than the half of the world population um, go go for voting, I have an election. It's, we have a downside there. Yes, of course, also in India. Um, but uh, there's a huge opportunity, uh, and maybe the biggest opportunity since the iPhone or since the the, the printing press or booking press was invented. Uh, we see a huge opportunity, and that was our thoughts and our um vision there or, or our thinking when we see chat gpt was was starting there and 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 i knew that a lot of people in the in our industry uh thinking about the same way so what we did um or what we see um in our company we 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 don't go there and say yeah there's ai and you can do what you want or maybe you use it or not so we we demand we we, we are forcing our people that they have to use it and have to try it because uh, we also have it in our company goals. Um, we think that we that we can level up our productivity more or fifty percent or more, not because we 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 cut the stuff. I think we can create it because we make them more productive through AI. Um, at the end, we want to have the same uh, count of people in the company, um, but with more productivity through AI. This is our main goal behind. Um, for us, biggest learning for me is, and, and I spoke to a lot of companies, not only in the media industry, uh, I think one of the secret source in our concept is that AI is a management issue. Um, and it's not an issue only of the, the IT team or the editorial team, what I see in a lot of companies there. When we don't focus on management level to the topic AI and see the opportunity there, it's extremely hard to spread it inside the company. And we also don't see it as 
only for, for one part in the company. Of course, it's a huge um, topic for the editorial stuff or for the IT and security uh, issues and this kind of, of course. But at the end, everybody from our 1,200 employees should have um, or could have a digital assistant now by GPT, Copilot, how you name it or whatever you use it. Um, and AI is there to help everybody in their daily tasks. Um, and uh, that that's that's our view of the topic. Um, that's why we also implemented in our OKRs or company goals. Uh, till 2023, we only had three. This was, was ABO, it's called subscription, sorry. Um, sales, I think it's clear and the we is also clear, I guess. Uh, and we put there a fourth part, that's the AI part now. It's 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 uh, written down in our company goals. Um, so it's, we, we really see it uh, going forward there. And, and we also think that it's a, uh, um, speed is so uh, important now in this game. Um, but it was never so easy to, to get to, to start a new company and get fast as the traditional media companies for in case of content. Um, that's one of our main goals. We need to get an embed AI uh, to make our everyday lives easier and increase. And what I said, um, everybody from our employees had now the possibility to have a digital assistant to help them uh, on, on everyday topics um, that we get more productive. Um, one, another really important thing for us was, and we did it, six months too late um, in, in the reflection. Um, we see that our people want to use AI last year and they're trying, especially on the pri private day, everybody was using it. Doesn't matter if a WhatsApp message with Jeff GPT or receipt for the, for the family or this kind of stuff, but they were afraid to use it in the job, not only because they were afraid that uh, AI takes their jobs, this is the one thing, they were afraid what what uh, what is allowed to do, mm. where I can go, where 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 I should stop, um, and that's why we I mean, based on two or three pages there are guidelines. Um, what we say where 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 the lines right and left, and between that you can you can do your job and can work with AI, and that helps a lot because at that moment everybody was there saying okay. Now it's clear what I can do or what I have to do or what I should do and what is not allowed. And now we can work. Um, I think this is, if everybody, anybody out there and start thinking now about AI, this is one of the first topic I, I, I recommend to do and think about. Um, we make a lot of, of educational stuff. So we have weeks where we train AI topics and we spe with our team. Um, what we learned there, we had in the beginning, a few external um, consultants, but um, we learn very fast that uh, our team understand how AI can help them or works in the basics. So we have to to focus on the use cases, and especially on this educational stuff. We we only make workshops for every single department um, and talk about the use cases, what they have to do, or what they are doing the whole day, and how we can solve it through AI or automation at the end. And that and makes us say, very um, fast. Sorry? Sorry, I'm saying that when you say external consultants coming in for training, were they were they consultants who were at the intersection of AI and journalism or were they just uh, regular sort of maybe prompt engineering courses or specialists yes. and those kind of things? Yes, in the beginning it was, I mean, in the beginning, everybody was based on chat GPT, to be honest, because we started in, in, in early 2023. So there was, um, of course, a lot of layer technology startups or products, but at the end, till today, ChatGPT is, is, the, is the main core of, of our AI, AI strategy. But yes, in the beginning, there were a lot of uh, consultants who were talking about what is AI, how, is, uh, how works prompt engineering and this kind of stuff. And of course, also for journalism. Um, because I think that the good thing about ChatGPT is that everything is about text creation or content creation, and, and that's the main DNA of journalists. So that I think is especially for, under, for our in industries is a huge opportunity to be faster in case of AI because it's our core business. It's for, for, for um, 
for example, the, in, the, the PET production uh, industry, for example, there's a co big company called Alpla. It's also in India. It's, it's, it's from our region. Uh, they're producing all the PET bottles from, of, of course, Coca-Cola. There's a different discussion um, how we can implement or they can implement AI in the production process than we are in the industry when we're talking about how we can create uh, articles or videos or pictures or this kind of stuff. Um, so, but till today we make three uh, three AI weeks or or more days behind each other for our uh, for our for the whole teams uh, and different departments, even financials, HR, and this kind of stuff. They have their own courses um, and implement there a lot of things. So you said something. No, no, excellent. That sounds great. Okay, okay. Um, thank you. Then one, one of the of the coolest things um, were or are our AI nomads. Um, I don't know. I was in your company, but but what we see when we started to speak fully openly about AI, and we 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 really communicate every week on town hall meetings with our people about the company about AI. Um, we see that uh, there were a few people stand up where we never seen in the company. Um, there were especially gamers or people who are really uh, playing around with this kind of technologies. They are standing up and say, hey, I'm interested in it. And we started in, in January or February 2023 with our um, interdisciplinary t AI team where we said everybody who wants or are interested in AI come to us and we will talk about. And we see there are a lot of people who were invisible in the company and now are the, the, the big stars. Yeah, they're teaching the other people, they're they are going on conferences, they're, they're, they're speaking to clients of us how we, how we make this. Uh, and there are um, prompt engineers now or head of AI and whatever. Or, or, or so, um, and this kind of people are walking now around the company um, and going to each other and sitting next to you and say, okay, what's your daily tasks and which kind of tasks do you hate, but you have to do it? How we can um, create a solution or how we find a tool who can help you through AI. Um, and that, that, Yes, costs time, of course, um, but uh, it brings really the, the whole AI topic deep, deep, deep down uh, in the company, and it doesn't matter which which kind of uh, which kind of uh, um, passion or professionalization do you have. And um, what we are seeing now, or what we are doing now, we only talk about use cases. In the beginning, it was more basic what we can do, but now it's really only focused on use cases. What's our use cases? Um, how we how we can uh, uh, leverage how we how we can solve SEO uh, use cases for example or how we can use uh, which use cases do we have in sales for example to to create concepts to to make offers to automate some things and this kind of stuff or to put it directly in the CMS tools through browser extensions or or code it into so different ways but what is really the use case. Um, and it can be completely simple, and it can we have also use cases that are so complex where we say, okay, we maybe we have to wait a few months, but for sure there will be a solution in the next months or years for this case. Um, so, uh, before, and before we, we dive into, uh, sorry, but before we dive into the use cases, since we were just talking about people a little while ago, I was wondering if um, we were we were having a discussion with some of our colleagues from Hearst. And they were mentioning that they now have a lot of technical folks which are embedded into the newsroom. So they even have positions now called, you know, sort of director of newsroom engineering. That's a word where you wouldn't you would have heard, you know, engineering and newsroom in the same breath, you know, a couple of years ago. But do you have uh, sort of data scientists or, or ML engineers embedded into your newsrooms like that, or like how how are you organized uh, technically? Um, yes, we have. Um, so the dev team and the, the, the editorial team is working very closely together. Um, and there we have these data analysts and this kind of stuff, and they're working on a daily basis how we can make especially our core tools more productive through AI, especially CMS. Um, and they're really talking 
on a daily basis about these topics. Um, and it, but it's not only that they see okay, we only talk about AI. They, they, they talk on a daily basis how we can grow our subscription or reach um, KPIs and, and all these kind of KPIs. We need AI uh, that we can leverage because at the end we have. Uh, I, I'm sure it's worldwide the same thing. We do not have enough people to to or resources to um, uh, get all the topics done. So we need AI to help us to get these topics done. And we have a lot of um, content concepts where we where the technology is faster and easier than than a human can be. So, for example, when you make listings about the best restaurants in your region. Uh, you have thousands and thousands of, of uh, um, um, recommendations from Google or Yelp or, or whatever, and you can solve the problem to create great, great and stunning articles through these um, recommendations through AI so fast and so good. But you as a, that uh, a lot of these kind of use cases in the daily base where I talk about how we can solve it, and then the the, the they start working on it and it makes really sense to bring them more together. If they sit now in the editorial team, maybe it's a different discussion and everybody have to uh, um, do it by themselves, but by their own, but but that they work together and speak on a daily basis. Um, it's really important. Yes, also in our case. Right. Excellent. Great. And you Let's see dive straight also... into the use cases then. I mean, use cases. Um, there's a small timeline why how we we did it um and we see at the end one two use cases because use cases at the end i think a lot of the same that's only that you see what we did when when ChatGPT re released we started really fast with the key ai team it's sorry it's in german i will i will uh, send you the pdf in in english we started really early with workshops and and also decided in the beginning of 2023 that everybody in the company can start to create accounts on doesn't matter which kind of AI tool, so it's Midjourney or ChatGPT there, doesn't matter. Um, everybody can use it, can play around with it. We as a company will pay it. Um, the IT was scared about it, yes, um, but we said it's a time to market thing and if we are not the fastest, we we have a, a, a problem on the market. So we want to be ahead of this um, uh, topic, um, and it's here to stay. It's not a hype, as we know. And and when we heard Eric Schmidt the last days ago, we know that it's underhyped, not not overhyped. Um, no, we and we started really fast to implement it in the CMS. The, the main, the the first really. Um, Huge step for us. Well, this is called foreign moderation. It's the, the moderation of our uh, um, of our forums uh, under the articles. Uh, we're struggling since years there to to moderate it uh, really on a, on a on a on a good level. And with ChatGPT, we started or with the with the API through from OpenAI, we started to test um, how is the sentiment analysis from from OpenAI, and and can we Make it like a traffic signs, red, orange, and green. If everybody writes something and green going through and, and orange, we have to, to handle it and red, um, no, no discussion. Um, and we see that OpenAI was really harder and stronger than we ever want to be <laughs> in the beginning, but it, it helps really a lot. And, and uh, I think 70 to 80 percent of all. Uh, comments were managed through the OpenAI API in, and helped us really a lot. Then we integrated into the CMS. So we have we our our news portals and even the, the portals for the newspaper are based on WordPress, for example. Um, and uh, we we integrated their different AI tools so we don't take the the the, the open ones. So we create uh, our own um integrations and it helps us a lot so we we do not have an integration that they can create the whole article uh, because their journalists the, the, the need is not to create whole articles the the need is to create 
SEO uh, SEO headlines and, and longer, shorter, whatever you know, all these cases. Um, we started with prompt libraries, uh, worked not so well. Um, and then you see here, we had the guidelines, the AI nomads, we, we put it in the OKRs for 2024. Then we decided we are one of these 260 uh, companies worldwide who are using uh, GPT Enterprise or OpenAI Enterprise, and we are really happy with it. Um, it makes us faster and, and makes more value to our company. Uh, and it's especially from the European perspective, it's under GDPR. Um, so that all the data is safe there, uh, which is not on, on the other uh, versions of, of GPT. We, we are testing since autumn Microsoft Copilot. And till today we are testing. It didn't roll it out through the whole company because we are not for our cases, it's it fits not the best at the moment. So we are not so happy in the moment. So it's not bad. Yeah. Um, if anybody from Microsoft hears this, it's not bad. <laughs> but at the moment, it doesn't fit and fit at all the, the needs what we have. Um, and we work. It's better for us to be direct client of OpenAI and through the the OpenAI. It's, it's much in the different ways better. Um, we started the project PPI at AI. That means that we want to, on one side, automate our print production completely, and on the other hand, want to generate the newspaper through AI, so that the AI understands and uh, see where the article have to be on which page on, on which size. Um, I know that everybody in the industry is working on it. A few of them have cool solutions in the market already. Um, and uh, especially on the that the AI creates the newspaper, I think it's 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 a it's a way to go. But as we see, it can be maybe the solution is here very quickly. Very quickly, we will see it. The only thing is that we see that a lot of our part technology partners um, have to speed up um, in case of AI solutions. But I think that. For everybody, it's the same discussion um, and the thing. Um, we started uh, with Google, so we do not work only with OpenAI. We started with Google to um, to create to put all our pictures since not 1919, but but uh, a lot of decades um, uh, behind us uh, into one database. Um, send it to OpenAI and back to to uh, get size all the pictures, uh, take tagging it and this kind of stuff to make it more searchable. Uh, okay, it works so, really so well. Is, so the tagging is being done by by Google right now, or is that being done by uh, OpenAI? Yeah, we, that the tagging is now in the moment doing by by OpenAI. We we try to to create the whole. I uh, want to create the whole uh, library then through Google, but at the moment it's it's it, we started with OpenAI. Right. Um, because when we started, Vertex AI was not so far that we can we can try it. Um, but there we, we at the end we're testing both ways, and and the API who is delivering better solutions will win. Um, and I think at the moment anyway, you have to even for for text creation you have to try all the LLMs, and have to see which kind of of model will fit your. Um, terms of speech, for example, because we, I mean, we see with ChatGPT, everything is overwhelming. It's the American way how to speak. Um, and in Europe, you speak a little bit in a different way. So, for example, Mistral is way better there. Um, but the output at the end at OpenAI is at the moment, uh, I think it's 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 the, the, the best work you can get at the moment, uh, to and be what honest. About, um... And what about experimenting with the LLMs that maybe some maybe a German startup may have come up with just specifically only for like the German language? Uh, is that something that you've gone down uh, tried ever, or you've stuck only with the OpenAI as an experiment? No, no. We as as even as we started 2023 in the beginning, till today we are using so many tools, um, and we are we are testing so many tools. Some over through uh, through APIs, some over the layer technology, what, what they created. Um, 
because at the end there is no so we do not have the resources to to build every solution by our own yeah. um we we focus on our main core system like the cms or for example here the pictures where we say okay that that's the thing what may we want to create by our own but if there is a solution partner out there who have the better solution we will buy so we are not so but we we have to focus in a lot of things especially marketing sales and even in the editorial stuff for example social media we use of course we're using opus clip for example why we should implement there something different um uh, or yes we are waiting to open ai sora for example for the video stuff of course um or we are experimenting with uh, 11 labs so the whole audio topics uh, and there are so many different tools what where we where we are testing um because there is not one tool who fits all the the, the cases at the end and it, this makes it also really complicated at the end. Um, yes, so some cases what anyway, I mentioned it anyway. Um, we integrated everything in the CMS. I think it's the doesn't matter if you integrate it in the CMS or maybe have an, another integration, but I think we 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 are focusing at the moment. And for example, our team or our dev team have we have tomorrow hackathon. Uh, for the next hackathon for these KI solutions, uh, AI solutions. We need core system where especially the people who are not willing to use AI every day, that it's so easy to, to, to use AI even for simple use cases, even in the CMS or, um, or, or with, a, um, for example, a proofreading. We are using la language tool. Um, it's browser based, so it works everywhere. We don't need a tool there. So, so what? How we can implement tools or find tools um, where we can make it so easy for our uh, staff to use it, even if they are not pro in AI or GPT, uh, if they are using it every or once a week, or for example, we have of course people there who are not using it every day or every minute um but uh, but uh, there we, we need a little bit like like amazon or spotify it have to be so easy to use it um that there we are focusing on that. image database i mentioned monitoring we we are monitoring um everything what we can do so we we'll have a look especially how are the usage of all these tools or the the, the implementations there um which which tool they are really using, which uh, which team is using the more or less, and this kind of stuff, so that we get a feeling where we have where we have to educate more um, and where not. Um, image editing, yes, okay. Weather monitoring, yes, and, and, and even the weather TV show is uh, produced through HeyChan, for example, um, and we make it now for one year, uh, and I think one or two people are asking us. Is this an avatar? So I think it works. <laughs> um, but we had, we saw this on a, on a Swiss television company. Uh, they really make it on on classical TV, uh, and and it still works. Proofreading is really a huge or was a huge topic um, because we had a lot of people sitting there who make the proofreading and they getting older and and, and retired. And we said well, what how we should leverage it. And now we really there is. For example, language tool, um, and we uh, make the main texts are proofread by this tool. So it's browser based. Everything, everybody can use it, but only the paid version. If you have a, want to have a look there, the, the free version, don't use it. Uh, makes no fun. The, the pro version, and it's not so so expensive. For moderation, I mentioned content creation. Of course, I don't have to explain. I guess. Um, uh, we make a, we work a lot of with with uh, data analysis and creating dashboards out of it and, and working with AI. We are also testing different things um, or, or tools to to create them and and uh, see what you can get out of it. Also tools even in in web analytics, for example, the Microsoft Clarity um, tool where 
Copilot is integrated and analyzing your heat maps of the website and get you tips out of it and this kind of stuff. Um, we the police reports, for example, um, it's completely automated. They're coming in, they're writing the content, or when there is a, a transaction about a company or a house or or, or this kind of stuff, it's it's fully automated. Um, we worked on these prompts. This we make also with uh, GPTs, for example. Um, uh, translations, real estate translations. We we get a lot of documents from the government where as normal inhabitant of a region you never will understand. Uh, and the AI translated to 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 better reading or under better reading standards that you can read it or translation through other languages. So not the Google Translate, so really translated, for example, in English or in Turkish in our region or, or this kind of stuff. Um, we make whole workshops in the planning through AI, but also afterwards. So um, we're using Miro, we take uh, pictures of all the, 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 um, the post-its and it's unbelievable how AI tools can read your handwriting, even if you by your own say it's, I cannot read it anymore what I write <laughs> there, but AI can do it. So we have a lot of small tasks there what, what we, we, we try to, to integrate. Um, Tools, I mean, there's only a few, the most of them anyway, you know, um, it, 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 uh, it's nothing su surprising there, I guess. Um, what we at the moment work or have a focus there to automate a lot of these kind of things through Sapier, make.com. So it really on the easy way to try and learn. Um, and uh, the next thing, as I said, automation, print production, as I said, personalization, and, the, and the, especially in the ads part, um, the performance part, a lot of you will now say, yeah, Google anyway have a solution. Yes and no. Google have or the others have a solution if it's on a programmatic way. Uh, but in our case, 80% of our ad revenue comes through I.O., so peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, so we cannot use Google, Google Max, for example, for our clients. We have to see, and we are working there and talking to Google how we can implement it in our um, we, we are using Google Ad Management Systems, um, how we can use it on an I.O. level, um, but on our based on our systems, how, how we can work on it. Um, because Google Ads is okay, but our main revenue coming through AI. Yes, and that's, I think, a, a short run through what we are doing. Um, yeah. And I think, Maybe that's why we get the prize because we are not focused on only single projects. Um, for us, it's the most important thing that everybody in our company uh, gets enabled to use AI in their daily uh, for their daily topics, and that we as a whole company getting more productive at the end. Excellent. So, a couple of questions. You mentioned that. Um... There is a fair amount of monitoring of, of usage of the tools by uh, by the team. So, uh, and, and I'm assuming that most of your AI workloads are all run in the cloud. So, have you been seeing like, is there a spike in the cloud costs that have shot up? Maybe even though you've had increased efficiency of people, but have you kind of you since you've been using AI now for over a year, have your cloud costs begun to go up, or is that kind of flat line still? Not significant. Not no. significant, right? Honestly. All right, cool. And in terms of um, uh, sort of customer satisfaction, one of your customers would be the advertisers that advertise on your newspapers and on your sites, right? So have you seen, uh, I mean, or have you deployed AI to the extent where you've automated a lot of processes so advertisers are seeing faster turnaround of maybe uh, reports or as run reports of campaigns they may have run? Uh, have you gone down that road yet, or that's still something on the roadmap ahead? I mean, where we as a, where we use it on a daily basis uh, in, in case of our clients is, is of course in creation and and um, but on the especially what, what I said what what a real pain point at the moment is how we can make our campaigns better in kind of of, of deploying the campaigns um, where we implemented AI and automated um, 
uh, workflows is at the end to create from from the beginning of the campaign till it's uh, on air, for example. Um, they are implement we implemented a few steps and we're getting better and better. And we 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 also have a program that we started to pull all the data and even learning. For example, in case of native advertising, which kind of headlines, which kind of syntax of words are working better for which industry and which uh, goal um, that we are. This is what we are trying where we see the first results, um, but we have to ha figure it out how we, we are structuring the data at the end that it really works at the best F for the clients. The most of the thing is that what we see at the moment is that a lot of clients they are not using or thinking too much about AI. Um, we, we see that AI, yes, of course, in ChatGPT is a topic, but but the, the, the complexity to integrate AI and kind of, or, or how we can use it for a campaign um, and on the technological side to to to, um, to speed up on the campaign, a lot of clients are not so far yet. And there we are also trying to educate our clients a little bit um, next to our team. Also, I noticed that you mentioned personalization or hyper personalization, which is a big, big, big buzzword nowadays. So how far ahead are you in that journey? How have you experimented or, and, or, or what's your like goal? Like how, how hyper personalized do you, would you like to provide your offerings to uh, your audiences? I think so. We 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 on we on the beginning. Um, we see a lot of other other companies, for example, Shipstead and and, and other media companies that are far far um, away there, and and uh, really really make a great work. Even the New York Times and this kind of stuff, they're making a great job. Personalization. We we are testing and trying to to give you few small examples of person personalized things uh, where we are not sure at the moment what we are testing is what is too much personalization because we want that as a news brand we want that you have the chance to see new things um, and get of course information what do not have to do anything what you what you see or read in in the past um, because uh, we are afraid of the of the Facebook bubble, for example, that when somebody only see as nobody wants to see uh, murder or, or war or this kind of stuff. But when it happens as a news brand, we have to show you. Um, and that's that's why we 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 are, we are testing now what is too much, what is too less, um, what is OK for the people and even how how they want to use it. If if we are going to say we we are deciding that the grade of personalization for you or you can decide if you want to use it or not that's that's a few things what we are discussing and testing at the moment but we are still in the beginning right right and and, and lastly in terms of in terms of paywalls uh, you do have subscriptions as well right so so do, at the moment do you have like a hard paywall or is it like an ai driven dynamic paywall that you may be moving towards um now we have a hard paywall. Okay. Um, we 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 are testing on a database how is the propensity to subscribe through AI, how we can leverage this kind of signals better uh, through AI because at the end the paywall will be hard yeah. um, because we we have our concept is there. Um, um, and the most interesting part is for us, as I said, the, uh, the, the um, where is the signal that we know that you want to subscribe thing, and especially for services, this kind of stuff, for example, games, what we all know from the New York Times. Um, games are great not only for subscription, also for time spent on the portal. Um, and there, can, there is a discussion, can it be a metered paywall? But for the articles, there we say really straight, OK. Uh, and, and I think we have the, the, the possibility that because we are a regional news portal, that we have regional um, news, they're really unique. 
you will not find in Google, Facebook or another uh, news outlets. There we say this is paywall driven. So if you want to read this, you get a paywall, but we have a Spotify news model since two years where the, where the reach portal VOL.at with a massive reach of, of um, over 30% the people in our, our core area are on VOL every day. Um, there you can use or read all the news articles from our newspapers where we have with a special subscription model. And it's the same like Spotify, you have the subscription to VOL and you can hear, read everything, um, or you say no subscription and I get the free stuff with ads and all this kind of stuff and the paid you, you can't read. Right. Cool, and, and I, we're, we're coming to the end of our talk, but one last question for you. What's the coolest AI tool that you've seen in all your experimentation thus far? The coolest AI tool has so many, to yeah. be honest. Um, I'm experimenting, but it's it's in a private way at the moment because uh, um, I love music. And at the moment I'm experimenting with Suno. Um, it's unbelievable. It's like JetGPT, but for songs. Um, and it's unbelievable what is possible. Uh, I think my son and me, we we creating songs there where I guess you can hear in Ibiza, <laughs> um, for example. <laughs> no, um, I, there are so many tools. I love Midjourney. I, I, I love ChatGPT and learn a lot out of there. Uh, I love a lot of layer technologies, but at the end, it's, it's a clear uh, case there, what, what you can solve. But at the end, it, there are too many. I, I, Okay. Can attend, but I think at, at the end, really, especially in, in terms of when you are using the AI at the end, with also with GPT 4.0, uh, um, it, it's at the, still the standard. And this kind of stuff, like Suno, is in the moment really. I'm really fascinated in how it's how it is based on a simple prompt. You create stunning music with vocals um, in a way you never expected. Wow. Well, it sounds like you're having a lot of fun with that. Well, yes. I think we're pretty much out of time now on our, on our discussion. So I just want to say a big thank you to you, George, for all the insights that you've given, not just us, but uh, all the audiences as well. And I hope you can all get to learn so much more from Rust Media, and we hope to see a lot more innovations coming from you. Thank you very much, Jay, and uh, goodbye around the world. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.